your cybersecurity solution is here. Introducing Pentester's Advanced Cybersecurity Suite. Ready for peace of mind? Try it for free. No credit card required. Pentester.com. Came to Quaaludes. You didn't know what they were. He goes, what's them? My brother said, just take them. You'll be fine. And, we, and, he, and he ate them. After we laid them out on the pool table, we put them on the pool <laughs> table with a flower in his head. Um, when I was uh, debating on going between the Gambinos and the Bananos, what, they kept complaining because, you know, you're my cousin, you fuck my yeah. uncle's side, Andy, why am I going that way? My father was a wise guy. When, when, when my mother married my father, they didn't know that my father was a wise guy. In 53, my grandfather was a milkman and your grandfather was a kid. He was only a teenager when I was born. I just want to welcome everybody to the Reform Gangsters, and I have a special guest today for the holiday. Um, and everybody keeps asking me, is, is Gene Barillo really your cousin? And uh, I just want to let everybody know that he's definitely my cousin. And uh, I want to welcome to, to Reform Gangsters. What's, What's up, up Gene? man? How are you? I'm all right. Good. Good. So I, I keep everybody keeps DMing me. Is he your cousin? Is he your cousin? And the other guy's saying, I heard uh, Gene's your cousin. I said, yeah, he's my cousin. He's my cousin. His, his grandfather was my mother's kid brother, my uncle Junior. That's Diesel. Right. Yeah. Death wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They used to, you know, they used to call him Death Wish, right? Yeah. yeah. Looked like, look like Charles Bronson. Everyone knows that. He yeah. did. He did. He did. So, I, yeah. So, what's going on? I saw you were out last night in Tampa running around. That's good. Having a good time. Staying out of trouble. That's the main thing. Yeah, I am. I'm having fun. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, stay out of, stay out of law's way. That's it. I'm just yeah, trying to be good. good. You're still going to the gym three o'clock in the morning? Yep, I go whenever I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So listen, I, I this is what I gotta ask you, because everybody keeps asking me everybody keeps asking me questions. I mean, I, almost every week I get questions about you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but keep people keep asking me, did me and you ever run the streets together? Do we ever do any crimes together? And they don't understand, a lot of people don't realize there's a big age gap between right. you and me. So right. like um so I tell everybody, listen, when I went away in 04, Gene was only 12 years old. 94, 94. I, yeah, when I went away in 96. 96. I away, you were 12 years old. When I, I came wow. out of 04. So when I went away in 96, you were 12. Anthony, my son, was 13. So right. no, I never committed any crimes with you. But this is what I tell people, and you could, you could, you could explain it. So when I went away in 96, you were 12. When I later on, when you got older, and I started hearing stories about you from Anthony, Gene's doing this, Gene's doing that, and you know, I, and I would call my house, and my mother would say, Donna, which is your mother, is worried about Gene, he's getting in trouble. But I never, I was, I was away. So I right. tell everybody, and they left. So I tell everybody, when I got out in 04, I, you probably remember. So when I went away, Gene was 12, he was a kid. When I got out in 04, I, all I know is the first time I saw Gene when I got out, I was by Angela's hair salon. I walked in <laughs> to get a haircut and a manicure, and you were in there getting a manicure, and you paid for my manicure. That's so, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you fill in the blanks. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and, and also, I remember when you went away in 96, and during the time, you used to always get word back to me that you got this to me. This, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell Gene I'm going to give him a crack. Tell Gene. Tell Gene I got this for him when I come out, yeah. all right? Yeah, who told you that, Anthony? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, me and your son were like brothers, you know, that we were together uh -huh. since we were born, you know? Yeah. That was my that was, that was was my right-hand man for so long. And, um, you know, like I said, in 2004, when you came home, I was a, I was a bad. I was full-time, you know, running around. And you actually, you know, you actually helped me with a situation with Nikki Carrazzo. I don't know, you know, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I had the whole situation with the nephew. Yeah. I remember. Well, being Fat Andy's nephew helped, and me being Fat Andy's son helped. Helped me and my brother out of a few jams. But, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, it's funny because you winded up being with Vinny and Sarah. You know, if, we, if I never went away, I mean, if you were going to be in the street, and if me and my father weren't away, 
at the time when all that was going on, or but you would have been with us. I mean, you would have never walked it up with Vinny, but uh, you know that, that wasn't in the cards. But uh, I remember Anthony coming up and telling me about you know what was going on out there. And then when I went up, then I mean, so how? Explain to us because everybody keeps asking me, you know, um, what it was like growing up. Like, so your grandfather, you know, Junior, my uncle Junior, who, you know, for, for those out there that want to you know, my uncle Junior was Gene's grandfather. He was my main man. He never called me Anthony. He always called me nephew. He loved to bet hard. That's, you know, it's another thing I wanted to tell you. I heard a rumor they're going to knock down Africa Grace Track. And I told somebody the other day, I said, they can't knock down Africa Grace Track. There's ghosts inside that race track. <laughs> my uncle Junior's ghost is in that race track. You know? uh, right or wrong? Listen. He he listen, he loved he loved the racetrack and you know he loved you and your brother Albert. He did. Yeah. You know, you were his favorite man, you know? Right. And um uh I know there's so many funny stories he used to tell me when you when you gave him Quaaludes and said they were Advil. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He made out he he came into the bar, Lenny's bar. That was in the seventies, in the early seventies. He came in Lenny's bar one night and he told my me and your my my brother, he goes, Man, my back is killing me. I can't sleep. So my brother, crazy fuck that he is. He said, here, take these. He gave him two quaaludes. He didn't know what they were. He goes, what's them? My brother said, just take them. You'll be fine. And we and he and he ate them. After we laid him out on the pool table, we put him on the <laughs> pool table with a flower in his hand. We had him laid out on the pool table. And then we took it. Now we had to bring him home. So we brought him home. And you weren't, you, 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 you weren't even born yet because Anthony I wasn't know. born yet. We yeah. brought him home. We rang the bell. And your grandmother, my Aunt Fran, answered the door. And we carried him. We put him in the bed. And then about two days later, he came back to the barn and goes, man, what did you just give me that night? He goes, I never slept that good in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, was he, was just, he was hysterical. He, he was telling me one time that um, Tony Lee got really mad at him because he rolled a dead grenade in the club. Didn't he do yeah, something with yeah, a dead he grenade? Did. He did that. Well, listen, he, when he came out of the service, I was, so it was in the 50s. So I was about five or six years old when he, when he got out of the Navy. And he, so we lived on Lincoln Avenue in Brooklyn, you know, across street from a train yard. Now it's a building. Now it's a, it's a, it's an apartment building. But back then it was a train yard. And he gave me a hand grenade that had no powder in it, a real hand grenade. And he told me to go inside. And my grandfather was in the living room smoking a cigar. He was going, inside. he was a price to go inside and pull the pin, Right. <laughs> so I went in and I told my grandfather, Grandpa, look what I found in Uncle Junior's room. And I pulled the pin and my grandfather jumped up, grabbed the hand grenade, ran out of the house and threw it over the wall of the train yard. And we were hysterical. He got so mad at Junior, he wanted to kill your grandfather. He was screaming. At that was your great grandfather. But, you know, it's funny. So this is another thing I, I wanted to touch on because everybody keeps asking me. So when you found out who your uncle was, how did that affect your? Because uh, I I want to tell the story later about how it affected your grandfather. But how, how, so I know how it affected me and my family. But I never really understood. Like out of all my cousins, you're the only one that really followed us into the life. Because all my other cousins on on our side of the family and my father's side of the family all were legitimate. I mean, they had issues with drugs and you know all the other issues that come along with our bloodline. But uh, right. but. Yeah, they never followed us into the street like you did. You're the only one that really got active out there. So how did that affect you being like Fatty Andy's nephew? I mean, what, what, you know, because uh, it was, know, it he, was, was, it he was, was, you know, he was larger than life. It was, it was beneficial, you know. And honestly, you know, like me and your son used to walk around. I remember every time they'd see his son or any gangster would see his son, they go, Anthony, come here. So we knew we were getting money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, <laughs> yeah. Anthony, come here. That's all we should see. Anthony, come here. Ronnie yeah. one arm. We love yeah. seeing Ronnie one arm. Every yeah. time we see Ronnie one arm, we knew we were getting the top bell. Come here. Right here. Yeah. I, I should follow. So, yeah. you know, it was it was beneficial. But the problem was is that um um when I was uh debating on going between the Gambinos and the Bananos, what they kept complaining because, you know, you're my cousin, you fuck my yeah. uncle was fat Andy, why am I going that way? At the time, you know, you were you were out on bail. You were on a cold case. Yeah. You got charged, the, you know, the murder. Yeah, you were right. out on bail. And, um, you know, I was going to debate. And they said, well, you're fighting these nephew. How are you going with these fucking guys over here? And I said, well, you know, I got into a beef. 
And, you know, you ain't taking my back. I mean, yeah. these guys are taking my back. You know what I mean? So that's the only reason why I went to the Bonanno family because the Bonanos were taking my back. Yeah. These Gambino guys, Anthony, remember, they wanted me to go with Freddie Hot. What am I going to do with Freddie Hot? He's fucking. I know. He's 100 what years old. I know. What the fuck am I going to do with Freddie Hot? I'm fucking 21 years old. I'm sitting in the club. He's 80. You know yeah. what I mean? So, plus, was, you know, yeah. Plus, that, plus, Vinny and Sarah, who you winded up being around, was was good friends with my old man anyway. They were good friends them. with Tony Lee. And he was good friends with your grandfather, my uncle Junior. They yeah. actually went to grammar school together. My mother yeah. and Vinny and Sarah were, I think, in the same grammar school together. So they all grew up together anyway. So so it wasn't like you were going with strangers. It was just a right. different crime family. But it, right. was still, it was still, you know, the same circle of friends and everybody knew each other. So Vinny knew that you who, who, who you were related to. So Vinny was supposed to look out for you, you know, whether he did or not, that's another story, but he was supposed to look out for you because you were Fat Andy, Fat Andy's nephew. You know, your, your grandfather, he didn't know my father was a wise guy. When, when, when my mother married my father, they didn't know that my father was a wise guy. In 53, my grandfather was a milkman and your grandfather was a kid. He was only a teenager. When I was born, my mother was 19 he was uh he was like 17, 16 or 17 when I was one. He was a kid. Wait, I want to ask you something, man, because you'll yeah. notice. Who was when my grandpa got locked up with all the guys, who was the co-defendants on that case in 69 when your father got him out of the, the, the case? Oh, that was his friends. That was um that was uh I forget the guy's name. He winded up in a wheelchair. He was a bank Tommy robber. Wheels. Tommy yeah. Wheels, right? Tommy, Tommy, yeah, Tommy, yeah, right, Tommy, yeah, Tommy, and I forget another guy, a, a couple of good-looking guys. But wasn't but, it uh, Jimmy Burke score? Wasn't it a score for Jimmy Burke? They got shot from a helicopter, right? From a police. I think, I think Junior was the driver. I don't remember, but he, I don't even Junior. They all got Tommy got shot from right. a police helicopter. They shot Tommy from a police helicopter. And uh, and and yeah, my your junior beat the case. My father got involved. It was there was another guy too. He's a really good looking guy. I forget his name. They were all friends of of your grandfather's. They all grew up together. They they uh they were childhood friends, but they became bank robbers. These guys, right. yeah, right. They and, were uh, hijacked. They were hijacked. They were doing hijacking. Hijacking and that, but that was a bank robbery. That I believe. Right. And, they, and they shot them. They they with the police helicopter was shooting at them. And Tommy got shot and severed his spine. He winded up in a wheelchair, Tommy. Right. Yeah. And he was the only one that actually stood friends with your grandfather, with Junior, with my uncle. Because I don't know what happened to the rest of them, but I remember always going to see Tommy. Because then later on, when they built Starrett City, they built that big place, Starrett City, on, on Linden, up there on, on the Bell Parkway. They had That was the first place around our neighbor that had handicapped apartments. And he got into them, one of them apartments. And me and your grandfather used to go visit him there. Tommy, he was in a handicapped apartment. But, uh, yeah. yeah, he was a good guy, Tommy. I'm surprised you remember that. You weren't even born then. That yeah, he, he, yeah, he always told me that because he said your father got him out of the, that, got him in a nut house. They yeah, put him yeah. in the loony bin. Yeah, they, put him, they put him in the psych ward. Yeah, that's yeah. how he beat the case. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was always a little crazy. But when he yeah. was a kid, he found out. So when my father got married, he, he, was, he borrowed Shylock money off some guys. And they came to my grandfather's house on Lincoln Avenue. And they threatened my grandfather. So my grandfather was a milkman, your great-grandfather. Right. And my mother was in the house with me. I was just born. I was an infant. And my grandfather went in the house, and he was rattled. You know, he was a legitimate guy. He was a milkman. And, he, and my mother said, what's the matter? And, and he says, there's two guys sitting outside and waiting for Junior to come home. He owes them money. They, they were yelling at me. So my mother goes, they were yelling at you. So my mother knew. My mother called up my old man in the bar and told him what happened. And so my father came to Lincoln Avenue by himself and he parked up the block and he walked up the block and the two guys sitting in the car, they saw him and they got out of the car. He goes, Andy, hey, what are you doing here? He goes, what am I doing here? He goes, my father-in-law lives here. You know, the guy that you just threatened. And the guy, oh, we're sorry. But, so to make a long story short, Junior, your grandfather, didn't have to pay them. And my father threatened him and said, if you ever talk to my father like that, and blah, 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 and they left. And that was the end. And now once Junior found out that his brother-in-law was a wise guy, that was it. He was all over the day, but I'm fat Andy's brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so anyway, so now when I, I'm away, I'm away. I hear, I, I'm hearing stories about you. I get out in 04. 
And like I said, I saw you at Angela's. That was that was my spot. Angela was my spot. Of course. I, I put Angela, you know, I, I actually put Angela on the map. You know, that, she told right? me that. Yeah. She told you that, right? She, she said you were everybody around. Yeah. Uh -huh. She had a little stand in Capelli's that was up up Crossbay Boulevard. There was a, a hair salon named Capelli's where my friend Lisa was the hair cutter and Julie Capelli owned it. And I went right. and Angela had a little table in there doing manicures all by herself. And I brought Ronnie one on there to get his one hand manicured. And me and I brought Ronnie there. He was the first customer I brought her. That was I, it. And then Ronnie and everybody That's started it. going there. And then she everybody. started going there. And she yeah. got so busy that she opened up the salon up the road. Yeah, I put yeah. her on the map. So Stella, I get out of her, her sister Stella. Anthony said I used to cut my I even took my daughter there when I got out in 04. I took right. my daughter there and they did her hair and then I took her to see her the Lion King. So I get out in 04 and um I see you at the Angeles, you get you pay for my manicure. Right. And I know you're with the you're, you're running around, you're doing stuff. I right? um but I I'm I'm on supervised release, so I wasn't really doing much, but I, I was proposed and all that bullshit waiting to get straightened out. Then I get pinched again in 05 for the murder. But wait, I wait, 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 wait. One thing, because I got to string something out. You were told you could sit, though. I remember. I yes. remember this. Hold on. I remember like it was yesterday. They told you, they said, we can't get your ceremony done right now, but you could sit. You can right. sit. Right. So this basically, is what I was basically you're out. a wise guy. Right. So what happened was when I first got out in 04, they sent for me. This guy, Nunzi, sent for me. He was uh, he was just had gotten strained out when I was away. This guy Nunzi sent for me, and right. he told me that while I was away, Nikki Carraza right. had me transferred from Mikey Gallon, Skinny Dom's crew to his crew because he was close with my own man. My own man proposed Nikki, so they had me switch to that crew, and they put my name in. And Nunzi was going to service me. Nunzi, <laughs> so I, I so they they put my name in, and uh, and between now and then. Nunzi was going to service me. He was with Nikki. Nikki was his captain. And then about six months later, they sent for me again, and they told me that, listen, your name went around. Everything's done. It's all approved. We're only waiting for the ceremony. Nunzi don't have to service you no more. You could go on sit-downs. Everything's equal. And bop, 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 bop. We just didn't have the ceremony. I said, fine. A week later, I got pinched for the murder. Right. Yeah. But you're right, but you understand when they say you can sit, that means you're considered yeah, a white guy. Yeah, even even Vinny, even Vinny, I saw Vinny. I forgot where I saw Vinny. I ran into Vinny somewhere. I, I, I don't it wasn't the racetrack, but somewhere on in Howell Beach, it might have been Fud Ruffies or, or I don't know, it was somewhere. I ran into Vinny and Vinny told me that he saw the list because he was a skipper, so he got right. to look at the list and he said my name and he and he said, you know, we, we approved you. I said, Yeah, I know. Uh, Lenny Di Maria told me because Lenny told me about the ceremony and all that. So then when I left, I left, I left. I know when I left, that's when you started getting jammed up. I know when I left, you got pinched, you went to jail, you did a bid, you did a couple of years in the state. I know my uncle got pinched in the house, they raided your yeah. house. Yeah. So you could, you, yeah. So I was I, and I was already gone. The feds already took me, took me or took me away. And 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 then it was your turn. So what happened? You know, when did you get pinched again? So um, basically, they locked me up in 2006. I ended up doing four years. I came home in 2010. When I came home in 2010, I was full blown, you know, yeah. running wild. And then they got me in 2014 and they locked me up for basically every single charge under the penal law system. <laughs> yeah, right. When did, when did my uncle pass away? Uh, March 21st, 2010. 2010, because he got pinched with you, right? Or he got pinched? Well, he got. That was the first case. We got locked up in 03, right. remember, with the key law. Right. Yeah, then right. He, when I was away, did, we got locked up when I was away. Yeah, I, then I came home, and then in 2006, then they got him on a federal informant tip that there was guns in the house. Right. And, and they were hiding in the house. And my grandpa, I told my grandfather, don't get rid of them. He goes, no, no, I'm going to hold them. He's cleaning them. He's a military guy. So he's fucking yeah. cleaning everything for me and taking them apart. Yeah. And he's got yeah. the stash in the fucking house. And he goes, get rid of He goes, no, I'll hold them. And they fucking, somebody dropped a tip on the house and they fucking got, they got him on parole with the guns in the fucking house. That's not, and you got arrested with your brother too, right? Yeah, that was 2014 though. That was uh, right. 2014. That was, that was, that was yeah. the last time you got yeah. arrested. Mm -hmm. 
But that, that's that's the story of our lives. Arrested. It's like me. When the Rico status first started in the 70s, my old man told me well, it's all old for us. And, 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 and later on, everybody I know went to jail for a Rico, including Bro. myself. Everybody. Anthony, Anthony, that Rico law is ruthless. Anthony, they yeah. these law, that law is so insane. Let me tell you the yeah. the guidelines in it is insane. You have to you know it like I know it. I was charged with conspiracy to commit murder with the attempt that holds life in prison. That holds you don't have to hurt the person. No, I was in category six. I was the last category because they of can. my criminal history. Yep. that's why I got in. Hey, I got indicted with the acting boss of the Gambino crime family, Nikki Carraza. And I got more time than him. Yeah. That's good. Well, <laughs> well yeah. And that, yeah. And you know, yeah. what, what was your point? 47? Would you have oh, yeah. Off the charts. Yeah. I was, I was, I was gone. I was category so, six. I'm 30 years old. I had category yeah. six. My points are 47. The career yeah. arms act. I mean, you know what the career yeah. arms act is. Yeah. Minimum yeah. mandatory 22 years. So, you know, yeah. th th this is the shit that we went through. The RICO law, people don't understand. It's designed for, to fuck us. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. made up laws. These laws Very are made true. up. Yeah, it's bullshit. It buries you. It buries yeah. you. So, and then, so I, so yeah, so then I get out. And, and, you know, it's crazy because out of the whole family, me and you and my own man were the only ones that really were in the street, like doing shit in the street. I mean, you were a little more crazy than me, but, you know, I, I was violent. I mean, I was violent. Don't get me wrong, but I was, you were more, I was a lot calmer than you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever right. you want to say, I don't know. If you're enjoying my show, please join my Patreon. Ask your questions live. And please uh, join my Patreon at reformgangsters.com. Uh, but uh, listen, we both winded up in the same place. It's crazy. You know, um, I, 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 was, I just, you know, I used to tell my, my daughter the other day that, um, you know, if my father didn't die in 99 when I was away, if my father was home when I got out of jail, uh, all our lives, all our lives would have been different. Even yours, I mean, that would have affected. I was all with him. I was with him all the time at the swim club. Uh, listen yeah. to me. I'll tell you a funny story, right? Yeah. So we're at um, Corey's birthday party. I think this is after he got out of jail in '99. Yeah. Ninety, there. yeah, ninety. He got out what? Ninety six. I didn't get out. Nine, no, he got, he got, he got out. He got out in nine. He got out in ninety seven, March of nineteen ninety seven. Right, ninety seven. So it's. It's Kat, uh, your, your brother Albert's, uh, it's Corey's birthday party, I believe. It's yeah, that June. Of, uh, Corey's birthday's in June. At Carousel's. It was at Carousel's, yeah. right? So Aunt, your father just got out. So he's used to be, you know, it's bad Andy. So we're sitting at the party. All of a sudden, like, your, your dad had no voice box. You remember? I know. He's, uh, yeah. So he used to go, ah. So all of a sudden, they're bringing the food out. And you know, everybody's looking. And he, he's looking at the food. And he's eating it. And he's going... What the fuck is this? So it's not like the best stuff. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I know he went out to play. They when he went ballistic on Bruno, supposedly. Yeah. How fucking dare you give me this bullshit? I just came home. All of a sudden we see people coming out with entrees. Wait, the whole <laughs> place. Wait, this fucking nine courses coming out. We were all dying yeah. laughing. He went yeah. ballistic on him. Like, how fucking dare you disrespect me? I come out and you give me this fucking bullshit yeah. food, you know? Yeah. And you know, you just seen the fear. We went into this swim club. He would have like 20 people with him, and they're just like, hey, Andy, you just see him yeah. walking in, and, you know, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, like, no. God, man, you know? That swim club, he, he, that swim club, it's gone now, but when we were little kids in the 60s, we used to go horseback riding across the street from the swim club that is the stables, and he would, him and Tony Lee would take us all horseback riding, and they would go sit in the swim club and drink while we were out in the park riding horses, so he's been going to that. He was going to that swim club for, for years and years and years, way before he got he got arrested. And yeah. that's another thing. You know, we were all away. When you and Anthony were growing up, we were in Like, he was in jail your whole life, my old man, basically. He went to jail. Anthony, 82. You were born in 84, right? Yeah, when did he go? 83? No, he got arrested. In, he, got, he got indicted at the end of 83, and he got pinched in 84 because he went on the lamb. He got right. pinched in 84. So he was away from 84 to 97, your whole your whole life. He was in jail. Me, Anthony, your cousin, my son, his, the first 21 years of his life, my father and me were in jail, or one of us were in jail. This whole, just like you, the first 20 years of your life, either I was in jail, we were both in jail. So really, you know, um, we missed a lot. But I yeah, have, listen, I have videos still of me and your son, we were like five years old, and yeah. your son's going, Oh, my dad, he's in the army. He's coming home. It was my confirmation. I think it was my confirmation party. I have it. 
And he's like, yeah, dad, say hello to Anthony. He's like, dad. And he's joking around. He goes, my father's in the military right now. Because that's what I used to say. You know, you were in the army. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I have so much stuff. But, um, you know, Fat Andy, like I said, and, and people don't realize that how much respect and power he had. It's not an exaggerated. He was, uh, you know, probably one of the most respected feared men at one time in, in that thing, in our area. You know? Yeah, definitely. Without that. And, not, and, you know, and that plays a part in our lives, too, because now we want to be him. You know, like, you know, now you got an uncle that's the speak wise guy, a father that was the speak wise guy. And, you know, I fed into that, you know, my whole life. Like, I always thought it was, you know, I always knew it was different than everybody else. You know, it was special. Even, I mean, your grandfather fed into, we all, even my, my grandfather was a milkman. He used to, you know, take money off us all the time and go to the racetrack. You know, give me $20, we'll be partners, you know. I loved it, you know. Um, but, you know, he, he was, he was, but he was a good, I mean, Listen, he was a gangster, my father. But, you know, he was a good uncle. He was a good father. He was a good brother. He was a good family guy, you know, to us anyway, to you, to me. He loved your mother. He, he loved your, your grandmother, Fran, Junior. He loved Junior. Junior was always with him. We got Junior's best job was I had we had a guy around us named Eddie D. He had an after hour joint on Rockaway Boulevard. In the 90s, I'd say I took over that after hour joint probably in like 89. He asked me for a job. Remember, because he used to drive the bus, and then he right. retired from the bus, and he asked me for a job in the after-hour joint. So I got him a job in the after-hour joint. He went in at three in the morning, and he left at eight and eight nine in the morning. He got paid one hundred and fifty dollars in cash for the night. He would get the money, leave there, go to Esquire Dine to have breakfast, and then go right to the racetrack. Yeah. Then he'd go yep. home, go to yep. sleep. He used to tell me, my nephew got me the best job I ever had in my whole life. He, goes, he loved that job. He loved yeah. it. Yeah. In the after you know, hour you know, and you know, my mom, my mom fed into it too. I'll tell you a story. You probably know. One time, um, her and your sister were sitting outside the club and they were young. And um, Johnny Beano was out there. And, and my mom right. was sitting in Johnny Beano's seat. And right. Johnny Beano didn't know that was Fat Andy's niece and everything. So right. Johnny Beano goes, hey, kid, you can't be sitting here. And my mom, like a wise ass, goes, oh, well, my uncle said I could stay here. And he goes, who's your uncle? And she goes, Fat Andy. He just turned around and walked away. <laughs> Johnny Fino, he had the right name. We gave him that name, Johnny Bino, when we were kids. Yeah. He was always fucking yapping, bean shooting. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, listen, it's clear we could laugh about all that stuff. Now, you know, now we're yeah. in a different trajectory, you know. And uh, and I owe it to you. You know, I'm on this podcast because of you and John. You know, John, I got to say, you know, tell the truth. You and Johnny A, like, gave me my wings. You know, your Gene and John show. Too bad, you know, you got jammed up. You know, you were on the way, but you're back on the way again, you know. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny. People ask me, how did I get into this? And I go, how did I get into it? I said, I was working as a counselor. And one day I got a phone call from somebody that Johnny A, like, wanted to talk to me. And I call, and he called me. And the next thing I know, I'm doing a show on National Geographic. And then my cousin Gene had the podcast. I went on his podcast. Then I met Pasquale. I got a manager, a partner, and and now you know now I'm doing now is on Get Gotti. But it all started with your show, you know, the John and Gene show. You know, that, and that, I, I've never been tell, I don't know. I've been tell, listen, I've been telling everybody since my cousin goes back to the old days. He hung out with everybody because people, you know, they talk shit. You know, there's people here. I says, listen, my little cousin used to sit on John Gotti's lap. No, you can't That's deny right. that. I got pictures. You know what I'm saying? John, like John got his up. He used to pull his tie. Pull his tie. You know, like this, when he was this the is boss. not real circle. Yeah, this is yeah. not make believe. This is just not for, you know, these YouTubers yeah. to talk that don't know. This is our life. This is our circle. You know, your father, John Gotti yeah. looked up to your father. Yeah, you know when he was saying? a teenager, without a doubt. Yeah. You know, and I and I tell you that I don't want I don't get into, you know, let let them say what they want to say. They all everybody's got to earn a living, you know. But uh Listen, when my son lived around the corner from, from the Bergen Fish Club, when I was away in 91, when I went to jail, Alice and Anthony lived right around the corner from the Bergen. And he was in there all the time. He used to go in there, pull John's tie, sit on his lap. Used, I mean, like it was like he had the key to the door, you know, yeah. and even and 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 hanging out with people. Listen, your grandfather was with me when I was hanging out with David Bowie. I am telling yeah, David tell Bowie. Me, we went, I went with the owner of the Ritz, comes to me and he says, listen, I got an appointment with somebody later, but I don't want to tell you who it is. It's a surprise. I go, Jerry, who is it? He goes, don't worry. I said, well, listen, I'm here with my uncle and my brother-in-law, Louie, and my uncle, Junior. He goes, no, they could come. I said, all right. So now the little lady comes to get us. We get in this car. We go 
to Greenwich Village to this old, like, chic, an old, old bowling alley. But upstairs was like a lounge, right, with all these dark red lights. We walk up, and who's sitting at the table? David Bowie, Catherine Duval, and, and, and Susan Sarandon. Two famous actors. Catherine Duval was voted the most beautiful woman in the world. She was French. They were filming a movie called The Hunger. It was about Susan Sarandon, and she's huge. Yeah. Big actress. And they were filming this movie called The Hunger. It was about vampires. And yeah. we walked in, and Jerry, one of the owners of the Ritz, was there to meet David Bowie. We come in, he introduces us all. We all sit down at a big table. And I'm sitting here, your, your grandfather's sitting here, and Bowie's sitting next to your grandfather, and your junior, and he leans over, and he goes, who's this English guy? He do not know who the fuck he was. I go, who? That's David Bowie. He's a, a rock star, world-renowned rock star. He goes, yeah. <laughs> so now, you know him, he told great dirty jokes. He started telling dirty jokes. David Bowie was hysterical, pissing, hysterical. Then he actually thought he had a shot with Catherine Duval. He goes, I think, <laughs> I think Catherine Duval might take me home. But I said, you have no shot with Catherine Duval, please. <laughs> but, you know, that's a, this was a night out. You know, we're going, and, you know, I'm going out, and this is a night out. I go to the Ritz. I'm with your, uncle, your grandfather and my brother, Louis. And the next thing you know, I'm drinking with David Bowie. You know what I mean? Like, this was yeah. a night out. You know, we lived a big life, you and me, you know, and, and, and people want to, you know, people now, you know, listen, I, I don't I don't want to bring up names. Uh, you know, we know who they are. They know who they are. Like this morning, someone put out a YouTube video, you know, I'm a fraud. I'm this, you're, you. It's all, all negativity about you, me, Johnny A. Light, um, Dominic, Dominic, Sammy the Bull. You know, we're all frauds. And all you know, nonsense. And I you don't know understand that. But what kills me is that we're all frauds. We all on Rico Rocketeering indictments. We were all on hundreds of valent pitches with guys that matter. I mean, how can it be fake? I don't understand it. If I go, look, I sit in a profile and I say, I shot so-and-so on this date. The FBI is going to go, oh, yeah, we believe them. They go, they investigate your crime. They see yeah. it's real. So if you profit at something to explain, if it's not true, you get in trouble. So anything that, you if I'm writing a book and I'm putting crimes in it and I didn't admit to these crimes, they're going to get you in trouble. Right. So this right. is all real things that we did in our life. If you right. say you did murder, they're going to look into what you've done and they check it. You were on a Rico racketeering case like I was. Okay? Right. So this is not make-believe. We are federally investigated for years. We have blood ties. This is who we are. What's there to lie about? If yeah. you have surveillance pictures with gangsters and all this stuff, it's, it's right. fake? It's make-believe? No, you know what it is? Listen, if people didn't talk about the shit, the Nazis they talk about, they'd have no content. That's all. Right. Like, they have right. no content. So you know what I say now? Listen, talk me, talk all you want. Listen, you know why? Because I'm getting, people are going to, I'm getting views, I'm getting subscribers, I'm getting views. It doesn't matter. Negative, positive. As long as people come on my, my channel and subscribe and view me, I'm, I'm okay with it. Because I right. know the truth in my heart. Listen, I don't, Am I am I making up a story I hung out with David Bowie? No. Am I making up a story that when I got out of treatment, I got out of it, people are saying that I wasn't around because I was on drugs. No, I was, I was, I had an issue with cocaine. All right. It's not, it's a known fact. Listen. Everybody knows it. I well, who right. cares about that. They yeah, all right. did. But the bottom line is when I got out of treatment in 1988, John Gotti bought me a car. Right. They could say all day, why would I make that up? That's John Gotti bought me. He didn't chase me and say, get out of here, you fucking junkie piece of shit. The you guy bought a, me. Listen, the you guy had bought a me a car. Crew. You had yeah. a dangerous crew. You had you had this you had Sally Boss, one of my best friends <laughs> followers, psychopath. Yeah. You yeah. had fucking uh, uh, a little a Robin Angle. Right. Yeah. These guys were psychopaths. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Listen, yeah. Killers. They were killers. Killers. These are fucking like the worst yeah. guys. You're talking about like when I was a kid, I used to go to the Ravenite. We used to go to the Ravenite. There was this old man, this old wise guy named Mo Cheek. He was around forever. He used to tell me, you don't know how lucky you are that you got these couple of young guys around you that are just like you. He used to tell me how lucky that we were going to go places. We didn't really go where we wanted to go because of, you know, issues. But, you know, but we had a Anthony's. good time while, you know, this everybody, was good while it lasted every and then it was bad. Everybody was partying with drugs back then, Anthony. It's not yeah. like it was just like you. You know what I'm saying? You say yeah. that, but everyone was doing that. You know, and people got to understand too about, like you said, with the proffer. When so when you proffer, 
and you get caught in a lie, you violate the agreement. You could get lied. Like my prophet stated that if I get caught in any lies, I automatically got life. Now, yes. it, no, and and the listen, and people got to understand out there, the feds, they know everything. Everything. They told me shit that I didn't even remember. Like I said, how the fuck do you know that? Like, I didn't know the shit they were telling me. I forgot about crimes I committed. They would tell me about a crime, and I would go, oh, shit, how did you know? And it, I, I forgot I committed that crime. And even right. murders, they thought I was involved in a murder that I wasn't involved in because there was a rumor going around that I was in on this murder on a construction site. I wasn't. I knew the people that committed the murder, but they weren't. I wasn't there. But for years, the rumor was that I was in on it, but I wasn't. Right. And, right. and they, they, and that almost got me kicked, uh, violated my 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 plea agreement because they didn't believe that I don't know that it got to the point where they they wanted me to take a lie a, a, a polygraph test, and I said yeah. And then once yeah. when I said yes, they they stopped because then they figured if I was willing well, to take a polygraph test, I was probably telling yeah. the truth. You and, got and fucked up. Well, you got fucked up by Peter Spicaro. He's the one that started the whole mess. Yeah, deal. he's the one that started with the murder because he was partners with Frankie, my brother in law, Frankie. They yeah. were work together. They were co defendants on, they were robbing armored trucks together. Them went with the Cavalcanti brothers, with Joey right. Cavalcanti. They all went to jail together. I, Joey know, Joe, I know Joey good. I know Joey yeah. Cavalcanti. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, they all went to jail together. But, you know, that was a different world. But anyway, moving forward now. So I have some things in the fire. What's going on with you? I know you got some things in the works. What do you got going? Yeah, so my book, obviously, it's a bestseller right now. Um, yeah, I, I read your book. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Anthony. It's, uh, right now, it's, it's, it's so close to becoming a, a TV show. It really is. It's That's about good. to become. So it's going to be about not just the book, but we're going to do 90s, 2000s, all modern day. And it's going to be like a like a TV show basically based on the late 90s to the 2000s of the modern day mafia. Not about the, you know, the yeah. old school. They know it already. Yeah. The new yeah. guy. Everything new. So they want to they wanna try who, that out. Who, who's, who's in on it with you? Who's doing it with you? And so uh, Hollywood produce. I can tell you that Hollywood's getting involved right. in it. That's how much they're, they're, they, they, they really good. believe in it. It's a good story. That's good. Yeah. Because what so, are you doing? What, what are you, you think doing? about it, Anthony? Ozo Park, Cow Beach. It's so many names. It's so, so many, many you, have, you have four out of five mob bosses living in the same neighborhood. Four yeah. out of five. I mean, you had Vicka Musso, Joe Messina. No, three out of five, excuse well, me. Well, Joey yeah. Scopo. Joey Scopo. Joey, well, he lived, he lived in Richmond Hill, Joey yeah. Scopo. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, Joey Scopo, Vicka Musso, uh, Joe Messina, and John Gotti, all living in the same neighborhood. Listen, I used to, I tell everybody, there was days in Ozone Park where I said hello to three bosses of three different families. I would go. I would go to the, to the diner on Cross Bay Boulevard in the morning, and Joe Messina would be holding court in there. I would see him, say, "Hey, Joe," and then I would go to the Chelsea house with Tony Lee, and Vicar Musso would come in because that was right around the corner from his house, the Chelsea house. Yeah. With, and and now it's not now it's that restaurant. Uh, which is the, it starts with um, I forget whatever. It's an Italian restaurant. It used to be the Chelsea house. I would go in there. Vicar Musso would walk in there, right? And then I would go to the Bergen office club and see John. One day I saw three mob bosses in one day. Yeah. And I knew and they all knew me by first names. They all knew me or you know, all hello, paid my checks, you know. Yeah, you know, that's just the way it was, you know. And I don't have we don't have to make shit up. So that's you know, why I just, I let it all go. I you know you know what I talk I talk to guys your age, you know what they used to tell me who was the toughest guy at the ADHD park? Who? Oh, my brother, brother Albert. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that he's he the was fucking my, Listen, my grandfather used to tell me stories. He used to knock guys out in the track all the time. This yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Every time and someone brings up 88 Park, they talk about your brother hands. knocking someone out. I was only had a good left hook. So you had a good was, shot. Yep. My brother, both hands. He could knock you out with either hand. He was in the gym. My brother used to spar with Jerry Cooney. My I brother know. used to spar with all fighters in the gym. He was in the gym. The only reason why my brother never became a fighter was my old man wouldn't let him, let him do it. My old man, I used to tell my old man, let him fight. He's good. Nah. He, goes, he goes, what are you, crazy? He goes, yeah, I'm going to go see him fight. And then if, if he gets hit and he's in trouble, you think I'm going to be able to – I'll be in the ring with a chair. <laughs> yeah. so, but he used to spar with that. He came home one day with all black and blue marks on his chest, right? So my father goes, what the, What happened? He had all black and blue marks on his chest. He was set, He was sparring with Jerry Cooney, who fought for the heavyweight title. Because I was sparring with Jerry, 
and he had a he was known for his left hook. He goes and he threw a left hook, and I caught it and I pushed it, and he got embarrassed. Jerry Cooney, because my brother caught his left hook and he pushed yep. him, and then Jerry was trying to knock him out, and he was just throwing crazy left hooks, and my brother kept on jabbing him back it up, and Jerry kept on punching him in the chest. And my brother came home with all black and the boom marks on his chest. He Jerry had, was trying to hit him in the chin. He was my basketball coach. He did. Yeah. I was, I was, he was Johnny A. Light's baseball coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny A. That's how Johnny yeah. A. That's how we met John. That's how we yeah. met John through the Albert was his baseball coach. He was a good coach, Albert. Listen, yeah. we all had, we, you know, we just had no, you know, we just would direct. I don't know how we winded up, how we winded up, but we all had some good traits. We all had some good traits, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, listen, good luck with your with your show and everything. What's going on for New Year's? What are you doing tomorrow night? You're not going to get in any trouble. I, I don't want to start hearing no reading about you or having this, you know, jerk offs on YouTube saying Gene did it again and all that. You know, don't give them no time. Try not I know. to give love them any it. content this weekend. <laughs> um, so I'm going to um I'm going to California soon. Um I gotta do some filming out there. And then um also uh New Year's, um I'm going to um there's some party they're throwing out in Florida. It's, uh, okay. Yeah, it's like some big party I'm going to. Like some big. Good. Uh, good. Well, now I'm coming. I'm that's what I meant. I'm coming to Tampa. I'm coming to Tampa. I just booked. The, they just booked me a flight. I'm coming to Tampa on the 18th. I'm, well, first I'm going to be in California with you. I'm doing the yeah. connection. I'm flying right. out to California on the 10th. You're coming in on the 11th. So we'll hook up out there. You're doing yeah. criminal cinemas TV. Yeah. I like him. He's a good guy. Yeah. He, he, he did a really good show with me. Uh, so I'll see. Because I contacted him already. He knows I'm coming. He said, and just so we'll get together. And then I'm coming to Tampa. They just booked me a flight. I'm coming to Tampa on uh, on on the 18th of January. So I'll see you in L.A. and then I'll see you in Tampa. Yeah, you could show, introduce me to some of them good-looking girls that you run around with. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm not that old yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> You look like you're 50, bro. I gotta be honest. Yeah, with you. 50. I'm, I'm, I'm old. Believe me. I know. I can't believe you're gonna be. I, I know you're gonna be 70. I can't believe it. No, I you am never 70. Think it. No, I am 70. No, I know. I'm saying I would never think it in a million years if, you, if I didn't I'm know you. Oldest, I'm, the I'm, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the oldest grandchild. I'm the oldest grandchild, and your mother is the youngest grandchild. That's right. We, yeah. we were both. It's, we were both the favorites. I was the favorite, and then she came along, and she became the favorite. That's your dad. That's your dad's goddaughter. <laughs> yeah, I know. My father baptized your mother. Yeah, my father and yeah. mother baptized your mother. <laughs> uh, no, my father. Yeah, my father and my mother baptized your mother. Yeah. 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 Who baptized you? I don't remember who baptized you. My aunt uh, Connie and uh, oh yeah, my Connie. Uncle. That's right, Connie. Yeah, Connie, Connie and, and uh, Uncle uh, Anthony. My father's and, brother Anthony. Yeah, father's brother. Yeah, your father was. He was a character too. You. I remember when I first met him. He loved you. <laughs> yeah, I know. We got along good, me and him. He was good. First, yeah. like, we threatened him first, but he was yeah, I know. Because <laughs> he was in the house. He used to sleep in the house, and my father found that he goes. What do you mean he sleeps in the fucking house, Junior? Your grandfather was by the house one day. He goes, yeah. Uh, Donna's boyfriend sleeps by the house. He's, I had to give him a robe. So my father goes, what do you mean you had to give him a fucking robe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was a character. He was a good yeah, guy. He's I, gone. He passed young, I man. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. All right, listen, I got to run. I'll talk to you. Have a happy new year, right? Thanks for yeah, coming Anthony. on. All right. I'll see you. I'll, see you. I'll, probably, I'll talk to you before that, but I'll see you in L.A. All right, man. All right. Be good. Later, Stay out of All trouble. Right. All right. All right, bye.